Hi, I'm David Bush. Welcome back to Bush History. Today I'm going to be talking about Grover Cleveland. This is part of my ongoing series of the presidential administrations, each one taking a look at specific events of that president's time in office. More information can be found at bushhistory.net. So today, let's take a look at Grover Cleveland, 22nd President of the United States. Number 22, his vice president was Tom Hendricks. His political party was Democrat. Term of office, 1885 to 1889. Who came before and after and what were their parties? Chester A. Arthur was a Republican, preceded him, and Benjamin Harrison was a Republican who followed him. Yes, Benjamin Harrison, the grandson of William Henry Harrison. Any unusual circumstances? Well, the country is just pretty much tired of Republicans. They, they were reform-minded, the Democrats were rising in power in the United States, and we have uh, a battle here between these two guys, between um, Grover Cleveland and James G. Blaine. James G. Blaine, continental liar from the state of Maine. How do you like that for an attack? Take a look at this. He was assailed because of his railroad connections by the Democrats, and the country was wanting to reform. And that's what Grover Cleveland offered. But, but, there was still attacks going on. And the Blaine people accused Grover Cleveland of having a child out of wedlock, which he did. But Grover Cleveland stood up and said, I did it. And, and when he won the presidency, his slogan was, um, when he won the election, Democrats used the slogan, Ma, Ma, where's my pa? He went to the White House, ha, ha, ha. And of course, the Republicans didn't like that very much. Anyway, the electoral vote, Cleveland 219 and Blaine 182. The office, catch terms, ma, ma, where's my pa? He went to the White House, ha, ha, ha. We already talked about that one. When he left office, was it by choice, defeat, et cetera, et cetera. And he was defeated by Benjamin Harris and had to do with the tariff position by Cleveland. He wanted to lower the tariff and Republicans wanted these higher protective tariffs. And he also, was um, against soft money, and that was a big problem. Soft money meant more and more printing of money based on silver as opposed to gold. Stuff that happened while he was president domestically. 1886, we have the Haymarket Riot. And if you remember, that's going to be the end of the Knights of Labor. But out of the Haymarket Riot and the Knights of Labor, we're going to get the American Federation of Labor started by Sam Gompers. We get the Pres Presidential Succession Act of 1886, which includes the cabinet process. If the president dies, well, we get the vice president, the vice president dies, cabinet, then a speaker, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's what the Presidential Succession Act does. In 1887, we get the Interstate Commerce Commission, which is the first real attempt to regulate interstate commerce by the federal government. Remember, it's a reform-minded time. We're going to get the Dawes Act, which pretty much does away with Indian tribes, because there's lots of land for Indian to Indians to live on if they give up their, their tribal heritage. We're going to get the Hatch Act, which is funds for agricultural experiments, the kind of connected to the Morrill Act. The gold silver debate is going to continue, and he vetoed pensions for um, Civil War soldiers. It was called, uh, they were called relief bills, and he said they were drained on the Treasury. And of course, that's not going to make him terribly popular with the Civil War veterans. Foreign policy the idea that we were starting to look overseas was heating up in the United States for new markets and new sources of raw materials. Anyway, this is Grover Cleveland, and I'm David Bush, and all of this is Bush history, and we'll see you again really soon. By the way, nice pink shirt, huh? Take care. Have a good day. Bye.